going on? Once again, it's Glendon Cameron with the Corporate Citizen, and we're about to have a little discussion. There's something going on with Airbnb, Toro, and Navy Federal. This happened today. Uh, someone left a comment. A cousin of mine took him 500s training, and he's doing really well. He just bought his first Airbnb property. He's getting ready to put his Camaro on Toro, and he just got a credit card for $18,000 from Navy Federal. If you have the time, put Navy Federal in the YouTube search bar. Put Toro in the YouTube search bar. And put Airbnb in the YouTube search bar. Everyone is doing a mad crush on these businesses. And once again, there's two things that are getting ready to happen. Within 12 months, Toro, Airbnb, and whatever other template business you can think of will be saturated. Right now here in Atlanta, my Toro bookings have stopped. They did not slow down. They have absolutely stopped. Now, there are some reasons to this. If I was to do two-day airport delivery things, I would get more bookings if I was to lower my price. I got a $50,000 drop-top Mercedes that when I bought it, this, this was kind of my plan. If it rented out well, I was going to keep it on the platform. If it didn't rent out well, I was just going to keep it as a personal vehicle. Right now, it's in my garage. So that was the, that experiment. And um, one of the things I want you guys to understand and to recognize is the second thing that's going to happen. Something I coined many, many years ago with Amazon FBA. Cameron's Law. At some point, a third party platform is gonna behave in its best interest. So right now, Toro has changed some stuff to lure more people on the platform. So with all of these people who are flooding the Toro platform, flooding the Toro platform, flooding Airbnb, flooding Navy Federal, guess what's gonna happen? There will be some changes. Do you know that Navy Federal was used to offer a secured card with like a $50,000 limit because they had so many people pile into these programs and they got adverse data points. The most you can get is a $5,000 secured credit card with Navy Federal. That's it. And what's going to happen? And I find it intriguing that all of this talk about Turo because I'm, I'm about to share some of my opinions with Toro. I, am not, I'm, I don't really like Toro, and I am thinking heavily about getting off the platform. And I'm thinking heavily about getting rid of the cars that I bought for Toro because the $50,000 I spent for the Mercedes, the $25,000 I spent for the Porsche, I could use that money to get seven cars for higher cars. Now, what I don't like, this happened. I have a BMW that a girl rented on Toro this weekend. And the check engine light and the ABS light came on. It, same thing happened to me when I drove it home. I took it to my mechanic, had it fixed. My mechanic said, doesn't need brake pads. Once again, this is key, doesn't need brake pads. What you have is a bad sensor. So more than likely, they replaced that sensor and then probably the other sensor went out and I'll just take it back and have it replaced and it'll be fine. Well, this girl said that the brakes were grinding. I picked up this car from the airport Saturday and drove it home. The brakes were not grinding. But once again, she said they were grinding and she reported this to Turo and Turo delisted the car. Even though she absolutely was mistaken because the brakes were not grinding. She felt because she saw those warning signals that the brakes were grinding when they in fact were not grinding. 
And one of the things uh, with Toro is Toro people are really, really chatty. They want to communicate. And like I said, I am that close to just getting rid of Toro and focusing on higher car and focusing on going direct. Now, there was someone who left a comment talking about you done bumped your head. Here's the thing. I am building a brand. There's a reason that I name it Mac Daddy. There's a reason that I name it Mac Daddy. So next month, I'm going to do some investigations and get my own commercial insurance. Because next month, the majority of my cars will have GPS kill switches, which I think is going to be a requirement. So I've got 23 cars with GPS kill switches, and I've got to add some more. So let me tell you why I'm building a, a brand. Now, this is some of the things that I've run into since I bought so many cars so quickly. At the DMV, they told me that I needed to get my car rental license because I have so many cars. And um, Geico literally canceled one of my policies because I had so many cars. So I've really dealing with, um, you know, rich person problems. You know, you're not going to go through this. You can go out and buy five cars, have them on your personal insurance, and no one's going to say nothing. But when you have 32 cars, so what I've did is I have two, I have two Geico policies. No, I have three. I had four. I have three Geico policies, and I've got one progressive policy. And if I buy more cars, I'm going to go out and get another policy from another insurance company to create diversity so they won't be wigging out. But here's why I'm going direct. Once again, based upon my data and research, I can go direct, I can charge less, and I can make more. Because I already know there, there's a bunch of people out here. Is there, there's a bunch of business models. I can literally run an ad on Craigslist. Hey, rent to own. You pay me $1,200 a month for six months. That will service your down payment. And then at the six-month payment with the key that you cannot miss any payments, you can never be late at the six-month mark, then I will sell you this car. And then at this point, you'll have to put the car. I, I can put that on Craigslist and literally be out of cars within three or four days. So going direct, and once again, why is everyone on these template businesses? Because there's a lot of information about these template businesses. There's a ton of information about Airbnb. There's a ton of information about Toro. Incidentally, if you wanted it, because, you know, I, I think, what's her name? The chick, Samara's experience. I think she let her number. She does like 20000 a month. I've done 21000 a month, and I've only been doing this four months. This is my fifth month. So from a dollars to cents, because tonight I am going to work on my Hargar uh, marketing plan. I got to run some more experiments because, you know, hopefully... Uh, I don't really want to buy any more cars this month because uh, essentially I have one, two cars in the in the repair, two cars that were wrecked, wrecked being worked on. I've got three cars waiting for insurance claims. And then I've got five cars in the shop, minor stuff. I should get four of those cars back this week. So fleet management is very interesting, which no one really talks about because, once again, there are not that many people with 32 cars. There's just not that many. Um, the most people kind of top out at 14, 15, and that can be a lot to manage. It can be. So I am going to focus September and October on going direct because I've had many people tell me that if you weren't going direct, or one girl pulls, like, I rent the car out to her and let her body insurance. And I appreciate her, but I'm not going to do that because, you know, if the insurance laps and she wrecks the car, I'm still screwed. So what I'm going to do is make a deal. 
because I feel that my insurance costs are $2,700 $2, a month right now. And my insurance costs will double once I go direct, which means that my utilization must go dramatically up because I made that $21,000 with literally half of my cars. A lot of my cars weren't rented when I made the 21,000. Uh, I had three cars. I had like three cars that I couldn't rent out because I couldn't get the GPS kill switch because my GPS kill switch guy got COVID. So this, this whole thing, you're going to start to see a lot of videos talking about Turo. Well, they're already talking about Turo slow right now, but it is nothing compared to what you're going to see 12 months from now, because here's what I'm beginning to understand about the car rental business. The vast majority of people are not professional. The vast majority, even on hire car, even some of the bigger co companies, they're not professional. They don't do things a certain way. So you're dealing with a bunch of amateurs, which are setting marketplace expectations which really aren't that good. Like literally I've had person after person come back and rent for me because I actually fix my, fix my cars. If they break, I fix them. And you know, like I'm hearing now, a lot of people don't do that. So what I'm going to do is focus on building a business off a of hire car. I will use hire car as long as a hire car is serving me. And I might keep, you know, I might keep 10 cars on hire car and then rent the rest of my cars direct. It just really, really depends. I just got to solve this insurance issue uh, next, next two months. But one of the reasons that you're seeing everyone run to these template businesses is people are scared of doing what I did. Going ahead, starting a business, not knowing what you're doing and just going through that, what I like to call the gauntlet. The gauntlet is a period where your business is super rough, it's hard, you have a lot of undesired outcomes. A lot of people don't want to deal with that. They are looking for a sure thing or as close to sure as possible because people don't like uncertain outcomes, which I can understand, but here's the thing. If you're building a template business, your income will be capped. Why do you consistently see people capping out at 20, 30 cars with Toro? 20, 30 cars, 20, 30 cars. I hear that there's some people who have 100 cars, but I've not seen their staff. And I'm here to tell you, 32 cars, it's me and my assistant. And if I had 60 cars, I would have two employees just for 60 cars. So if you've got 100 and 150 cars and you don't have employees, I would not believe you if you said you had 100 cars because there's no way that one person can manage 100 cars between the oil changes, going to the shop, repair. I mean, seriously, one person, that would be very, very, that would be like 60, 70 hours a week, 100 cars. So if anyone's telling you they got 100 cars and you don't see any staff, and also they're gonna have a professional location. They're gonna have to have a place to park you know, these cars, like you got a hundred cars and let's say you've got an 80% rental rate. That means you're going to have 20 cars with you right now. I have a 60% rental rate. 60% of my cars are out at any time. And I want to get that to 90%. So one of the things that's going to happen, you know, uh, Erica likes to talk about winter's coming. Winter is winter two is coming because here's the thing. Here's the prediction. Once all of the stimulus money is out of the economy, then the economy will have to deal with its own money. There will be no more stimulus money. Right. And then people will have to do business based upon because I fully expect there to be a slowdown in the car rental business, even on higher car. I fully expect it. I see it coming. And that's why I'm getting ready to be aggressive and to situate myself where I can deal with it versus just getting hit over the head when it comes. But one of the things, just like what happened with Amazon FBA, 
I've been doing YouTube 12 years. 12 years ago, you could have started with this thing, this Zoom recorder on Amazon FBA. You could have sold it, took that money and bought some more stuff and literally start Amazon FBA with 500 bucks and scale it up to six figures in a year. Those days are gone. If you're doing Amazon FBA with less than 10 to $20,000, you're gonna struggle. You're really, really gonna struggle. So just like what happened to Amazon FBA because of the amazing selling machine, of all these guys selling Amazon courses, they, cause even the people who didn't buy the courses who also went on Amazon and started selling stuff, they count. And the same thing is happening in the Toro, same things happening in the Airbnb. And this is why in the corporate papers, I put some training. I actually this morning, I put some training on there because if you want to start a template business, your time is limited. Once again, if you start a Toro business today, you start an Airbnb business today and you're not in Hawaii, you're not in like give your I have a friend who has rental properties and she made she had confessed to me the other night that all her rental properties in the United States were sucking ass. You know, she paid too much. She got some bad deals. Now, she also has rental properties in Mexico. And, you know, she was like, I was telling her that you could create a course on what you did to buy print because she's making $12,000 a month from her Mexico properties. And the mortgage on her Mexico properties is like 400 bucks a piece. And she has six of them. And she's making, <coughs> and she's making like 12K a month just from that. After management fees. So, you know, what she's going to do is get rid of all her American properties and buy more properties in Mexico. So why is she winning in Mexico? Because everybody's over here. You know, to buy a property in Mexico, you've got to jump through some hoops. There are some things. There, there's going to be some certain barriers that's going to keep it from being flooded. And, you know, she's going to make money from her Mexico properties for a long, long time because the, you know, everyone just, you know, just can't go to Mexico and buy a property. You can't do that. And also she started with some money. So I told her, it's like, you could create a course, you could be a consultant and you can make a lot of money doing this because your course should be aimed at people with money because broke folks can't do this or people who are trying to, you know, they, they just can't do it. So like I said, I put some training in the corporate papers today talking about that because there are many of you in the corporate papers and you're thinking about starting an Airbnb business. You're thinking of, like, listen to me. 12 months from now, they're going to be super, super saturated. In my opinion, Toro is already saturated, but in the next 12 months, more people are going to pile onto the platform. More people are going to pile onto the platform. And it's going to be what's the same thing that happens on Amazon, a race to the bottom. What, what can differentiate, you, differentiate your car on Toro from someone else's car? Price. Like I said, I have my price in my drop top bins for $150 a day. If I was to lower it to $75 a day, it would be out. But it also would be crashed. It would be wrecked. It would have a lot of issues. It would be damaged. Because what I would be doing is taking it out of the uh, air, or environment of where people with money who are renting it and I will groove it down to where average people can now access it and average people will mess your stuff up. So um, I got one Toro rental in October. I may cancel it. I don't care. And that car is going to be in my garage and I'll just have three cars. I'll have the BMW X5, I have the Porsche and I have the Mercedes drop top because um, I'm getting ready to start another business that's not a template business. And I got my assistant on it because you know she's getting ready because she's gonna be doing a lot of the heavy lifting. But guys, keep piling into these template businesses if you want to, and you're going to wake up one day and you're gonna have five cars and you're gonna look out and you're gonna see that you have five cars that aren't rented. 
and you're going to go out and get these Airbnb properties and you're going to get them by hook and crook. And then you're going to find out that you got three, four, five, six, seven monthly rents you got to pay and you have no, no tenants, no guests. It's coming. It's coming. This is like, mark my words, as the economy, as we move into the first quarter of next year, you're going to see what's going to look like a dramatic slowdown. And it's not going to be a slowdown. It's going to be the economy going back to normal. We've had hyper economies with the pandemic pushing stuff like what happened to me last year. Most money I ever made in my life. That was because of the pandemic. If the pandemic didn't happen, I wouldn't have made that money. That's what happened last year, the pandemic. Because for me to go from 250,000 a month to like, you know, 100 to 130, that's a big change. That's a big change. And a lot of that was pushed by the pandemic. Uh, I feel that some people spent their stimulus money on my course. I feel that that went down. And now it's gone. And now we're dealing with the real economy, the real economy dollars. And I guarantee you, this is going to separate the men from the boys. This is going to separate the women from the girls. Because look at who's still running ads. Look at who's still making money. And I guarantee you, a lot of these stimmy ballers, a lot of these Johnny Come Lately, a lot of these Turo hosts, they're, they're going to crash and burn. They're going to crash and burn. Because they don't know how to construct a business from scratch. They know how to do a template business. And as long as the template business is humping, they're good. But the minute someone turns the water off of that template business, winter is coming. Winter. Winter, there's, there's the first winter, and then there's going to be the blizzard. And uh, like a lot of folks going out, once again, you're ignoring me. I'm like, do not finance any cars for Toro. People are going to finance cars. And one day you're going to look up and realize you got six car notes and you're not making enough money to pay your car notes. This is one of the reasons that I am starting a credit repair agency. I see what's coming. There's already a bunch of people with bad credit. There will be more in the future because they're going to jack up their credit and they're going to go out and get these cars and then they're not going to be able to pay the car payment and they're going to get repoed and then their credit's going to get jacked. It's going to get jacked. This is coming. Uh, people are overextending themselves for cars for Toro. People are overextending themselves with uh, getting properties for Airbnb. And whatever other template business that's out, like um, whatever, you know, flavor of the month. I like guys, if you're getting in a template business such as Airbnb and Toro, clock's ticking. Clock's ticking. And this video is going to age very well because 12 months from now, it is going to be very, very slow on Toro. It's going to be very slow on Airbnb unless you have an Airbnb in California, Florida, near the Disneyland resorts or something like that. You will still be making money. But right now, during this pandemic, anyone in virtually any part of the country could start an Airbnb or start renting out cars and they were making money. That's going to change and it's going to be a big change. So if you want to learn how to start a real business that's not based upon the template, you want to learn how to start a holding company, you want to learn how to start an operating company, go below, get in the corporate papers where I will teach you how to start a company and more importantly, I'll teach you how to get customers because there's social media getting customers, which that's what I use. I use YouTube and social media. And then there's the other way of getting customers that has nothing to do with social media. There's billboards, there's radio advertising. They still work. They're not as sexy as a hot lit Instagram account, but they still work. So once again, go ahead, get in there. The price is going up October 1st. I listen to you guys just like, hey, I need more time. I need more time. Cool. You got more time. And October 1st, I will not change my mind. The price will go up. So go below, get into the corporate papers right now, and I will see you guys in the next one.